And we are back with another episode of On the Record with Tiffany here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer. Um, I have one of my favorite people. And I, you know what? I feel like you should have been on here a thousand times, but you haven't. <laughs> this wow. is this is like, what, our second time this doing second, an interview? Yeah, it's the second um, time. It is the illustrious... Laura Thompson, fierce, feisty <laughs> leader, president and CEO of TAN TV. Laura, how are you doing this week? Hey, Tiff, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to have you on to talk about, it, this month is Black Business Month. So I thought, who better to have than somebody who has started what I think is going to be one of the most prolific networks, TAN TV. So can you tell my audience what TAN TV is? TAN TV is a digital television network. Um, we uh, broadcast simultaneously on five different platforms. Um, but we didn't start there. But mm -hmm. Right now, we, we broadcast live on five different platforms. We have the ability to go live simultaneously on at least seven uh, different platforms. Um, you have to register um, to to view our content. Uh, right now, you can watch free. And so wow. you just you register and you watch free. And so... Uh, I've seen some of your programming, which is super fun. Uh, Vance's uh, uh, sports programming. You know I'm not a sports person. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. But you have have no. I, I'm I like sports. I don't know anything about sports. So having me talk you know to you what on the sports, touchdown is right. Yes, I know what that is. <laughs> That's all you have to know. I'm what, not that bad. A touchdown. It's a three pointer. <laughs> but you cover you cover everything, uh, especially with your coffee break. Yeah, we cover. Now that's you. We we cover sports. Uh, Vance is the the producer uh, and the creator of In the Room, and he has several different talk shows, and sports talk is one of them. Uh, we also do a midnight show on there and talk about controversial topics <laughs> or fun topics that people want to chime in on. Um, uh, on the coffee break, um, you know, we I run the gambit. I'm the host and the creator of the coffee break. I've uh, been doing the coffee break since probably 2015, started out on the one radio. Uh, when I got my own platform, I transferred um, all of my shows over to TAN TV, the African American Network. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a local feel with a global reach. <laughs> I love your I love your tagline, local feel with a global reach. And right. I also like the fierce feisty Laura. Well, that's because I'm the fabulous, fierce, feisty, friendly, <laughs> phenomenal. Sounds like F, but it's not. <laughs> But I spell it with an F. So. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> so I, I love it. So how did you conceptualize the coffee break? Because it's been a, around for a while. How, so I, know, I was I was running for um, <clears throat> state rep mm -hmm. um, back in 2015. Ruth Jones McClendon uh, re resigned or retired. Mm -hmm. uh, and the seat was left open. So I ran for the interim seat. Um, as an independent, won it. But wow, an independent winning a seat in uh, Texas. Right. So I, I was the second uh, independent uh, to win at that time in in more than six decades. Wow. Um, I was the, the only independent in the state of Texas on the ballot at that time. Um, I was the only independent in the House. <laughs> the first... African American and female independent in the house in the state of Texas, so I don't know if it will, but it, it should. I think go in the history books, but I, I don't. I don't know if it will or not. It it's, should go in the history books. We'll have to make sure that that happens. Uh -huh. Tell me, what made you think you could? I mean, as an independent, like you just said, every single one of those was a first. Mm -hmm. So when you were thinking, hmm, maybe I'll. Maybe I'll run. Well, what I, what made you think I can do this? I, um, I can I can be the first one to do this. Well, I wasn't even thinking about that. I, as a matter of fact, I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> that I was the first one. 
or that there hadn't been anybody uh, in Prior to over you. several decades. Yeah, I didn't know that. Six decades. Um, so I didn't know. So I'm, I just do things because, like, being a state rep was a dream of mine because I, mm -hmm. I uh, when I was a little girl, uh, Sinfronia Thompson came to our church. Uh, she was real pretty. She was a state rep. She was a speaker for a Women's Day program. And so mm -hmm. I said, I want to be a state rep like her. Didn't know what a state rep was. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know all the things that went along with being a state rep. But uh, I ended up uh, inheriting Ruth Jones McClendon's office. She had the largest office in the state capitol. Mm -hmm. And it was right next door to Sinfronia Thompson. She was still wow. there. After after all these years, so that had to be like a dream come right. true. But it wasn't doing session, so I was never able to run into her. Although I ran into her at we had a, a black caucus Christmas party, mm -hmm. so I ran into her there. But and and then told her about it. But I had run into Sinfronia Thompson uh, in Dallas, Texas, too. Well, I moved to Dallas. Uh, I always wanted to do something that went against the grain. Mm -hmm. uh, she was there. Uh, I was talking to her and another state rep. I forgot his name, uh, but I was asking him why, you know, politicians double talk. You say one thing and then you do something else. Mm -hmm. She was sitting behind him and she was just nodding her head, to, <laughs> you know, encouraging me to continue to mm -hmm. to have that fight in me. Uh, and so I was in my early twenties then. Wow. Uh, and she had already been serving for several years. My probably about 10 years. So it, so that's the coffee break started. And, and that was your question, which I gave you the long <laughs> answer to. But uh, the coffee break started uh, as a result of me running for state rep. And I wanted to give like updates and kind of explain to people uh, on a Monday show what it meant to be a state rep and what it meant to be a constituent uh, in a in a particular district and how important it was to kind of know, uh, you know, what a state rep does and how that state rep benefits the, and, and serves a, a, a constituents in their community or in their district. Now, and I so, have a question for you, speaking of constituents. How do you see the political scene now? Because what you just described is what I've always heard my entire life, is that you serve the constituents. You don't serve your base. Mm -hmm. You serve the constituents. So that's everybody that is within your district. Uh, everybody, Not just the people that elected you. Mm -hmm. So what do you see? How do you... How do you frame what, what we're seeing right now? Um, I think it's just a product of what's been happening already, but it, it's, they're just more open about it. Uh, they uh, have a lot more to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a big power struggle right now, a big transitional time right now, uh, a, a transfer of power and a transfer of wealth. And so uh, when people feel threatened, you know, they, they act up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That, in, in my opinion, but, you know, in, internally, you know, all, all the constituencies is when you come out, do the photo op, you know, tell people what you're going to do. You know, they don't see what happens behind, uh, behind the, scenes. the scenes. And so it's the, it, it's been like that, you know. Um, it's just starting to bubble up and surface where it's boiling over or bubbling over. So, mm -hmm. So because it seems see it. pretty polarized right now. You've got, I, when I was uh, 20 years ago, uh, or 30 years ago, I'm getting older, 30 years ago when I was in my 20s, mm -hmm. uh, we, we definitely still had, still had all of the same parties, but people would get to the table and come to a middle ground. Like, they weren't, so polarized that they didn't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Like you could see if, if you went to DC, you would see Republicans and Democrats, you know, having, having lunch and dinner together. They, they weren't like 
not friends. Mm -hmm. There were people that were friends in, in the various groups. Mm -hmm. You don't see that so much. Well, you no. don't see it. They are. They, they still at the table <laughs> behind the scenes, but it's just, you know, who has the voice and who has the platform right now. In Texas, you know, um, the Republicans, you know, had a platform and the, the, the biggest voice. Um, and and Democrats are outnumbered in Texas, not necessarily in Bear County, uh -huh. but in Texas. So it's, uh, you know, they still communicate with each other, but it's, um, there's a battle, you know, and some things that they're at odds against uh -huh. right now. And so... Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, back to Tan TV. So as a businesswoman, you're in a, in a field that, that really is, that has been uh, male dominated in terms of ownership mm -hmm. of, of uh, companies. How did you, as a woman, get out there and build this company up? Because I know a lot of meetings, you had to have meetings where people were like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I still have them. <laughs> <laughs> all they can, all, uh, you know, they can see it, but, um, you know, as far as, as selling it, it's it's a, sometimes it's a, a struggle depending on who you're uh, trying to sell to. But I've been in the media and public relations business um, for a long time, I had a media and public relations firm for 16 years. So I was on the other side of, of media. And so my struggle then and, and my my focus then was was ensuring that uh, I improved the image of African Americans mm -hmm. um, through my agency. You know, that mm -hmm. was my my slogan was we make you look good. And so, um, you know, I had a bunch of contracts with with different companies and, and entities. And my role was to, you know, do outreach and, and public involvement with for African Americans, and also did ad placement. I did the whole gamut. I had a full service meeting public relations firm, and so um, to be on the other side, it's it's a little bit different, um, and it's you know, people in the past have been kind of standoffish because. Um, you know, my focus is the African-American market. But my, my focus has always been the African-American market. And so um, it's, when I first started, I was just thinking about an outlet, mm -hmm. to provide an outlet, not thinking about the content right. and the production part and all of the, those things that had to go along with it because I never really had to do that. Um, and then uh, Vance Bradford came in and he always wanted to do content, African-American content. Mm -hmm. So it was a, uh, and he, he came in full force, you know, producing shows live. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I had that missing piece was the, the content. Cause I was just gonna, I was just gonna grab content from different places and, mm -hmm. and air it on 10, which is not really uh, a television network per se. It's just, mm -hmm. but, but now all of our content is, is basically original content. And so I learned a lot about the production side of it. I learned a lot about, you know, um, you know what it takes to to put all those things together. And it's it's there's a lot of different pieces to it. It's not just uh, one thing. So as a business, are you creating? It sounds like you're creating your own business model because uh, I haven't seen anything like Tan TV. Yeah, we're, we're, there's some things like it, like people have shows mm -hmm. um, that they do on a consistent basis. With TAN TV, we have to do shows. We have to continue to create content in order to, in, in, in the form of different shows or um, maybe independent film. Um, you know, we have to do a lot of collaboration in order to, you know, keep fresh content. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, uh, it's it's bigger than what I thought, but I always do bigger things always, than what I'm. You're known for big stuff, Laura. Um, <laughs> that's what I was. That's what I was saying before we <laughs> before we started filming. You are known for being a visionary. Yeah. That's what people. That's what 
when Laura Thompson is not in the room, that's what people know you for. Right. For for coming up with something completely new outside of the box that that addresses what may seem like a rudimentary problem in a completely different way. Like what you what you're doing with work is the new hustle. Who else would I mean, who else would have come up with that that concept and delivered it in the way that you did? That's that's a Laura Thompson original mm-hmm. right there. So yeah. tell everybody about Work is the New Hustle. We've talked about Work is the New Hustle before, but now you've gotten through the classes and, and what mm-hmm. it's done for the kids. So so they've done, you know, we we kicked off Work is the New Hustle with a, a press conference on June 29th. We started with a kickoff pep rally on July 14th. Um, and between July 14th and now, well, we're having an award ceremony tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. So between July 14th and now, you know, the kids have gone through financial literacy training. They've had work days, exposure days. Um, they've produced a, um, they've created a song uh, mm-hmm. called Work is the New Hustle. Um, and it's, it's, it was, it was done by the artists or kids from ages five years old to nine years old. Um, and, and I heard and the song. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, and the concept of work is new hustle. You So instead of just saying, oh, we have a problem in our community where where there's a disconnect between the police and kids, Laura comes up with this idea. OK, well, let's let's fix that. Let's bring in the police. Let's bring in kids and put faces mm-hmm. with one another. All of a sudden. Uh, there's warmth coming from from the police side, which there's always been so many of them that have been warm and and uh, and love love our community. But the community itself can see that, and the children uh, that makes a huge difference for them because now there's not the fear there. Mm-hmm. So yes. that's one person that had the vision to say, okay. Instead of just sitting here talking about this and talking about the things that are terrible, let's let's go let's go break through, cut right through the meat of of all the nonsense and get to something that that can be beautiful. Well, I've been on I've worked in the community for years. I've been on boards, and um, a lot of times we just talk, mm-hmm. um, and then we we reconvene next month and talk some more. <laughs> And but I'm no always, action. I'm a, I'm a mm-hmm. person of action. Um, sometimes I might act too fast, and I have to slow down. But <laughs> <laughs> now that's the visionary. So, that's what visionaries do. Like so, you, you may get ahead of yourself. <laughs> some, some people don't. Some people don't see it until you know later on. Some people get burned out. Um, but you know, I, I have the ability to to keep going. You know, and see the vision through maybe not necessarily the end, but, you know, as far as I can see it. And so, um, and not to brag or anything, but that's what separates me from everyone else. uh, A lot of people is that, you know, Mm -hmm. I can see it, you know, I come up with um, uh, really cool slogans and names. um, And you execute around it. And so it's... uh, it's a, it's been an interesting journey. Um, a, a lot of people say, I want to be like you. You really don't, <laughs> unless you're ready to work. Well. Uh, and then solve a lot of problems and um, be consistent and persistent and insistent. You, you uh-huh. know, it's uh, it takes a lot um, to do it. You know, sometimes, sometimes you're on a, the pendulum swings high and mm-hmm. sometimes it swings low. Sometimes it swings back, you know, mm-hmm. but. Um, but you, you always persevere. remain. You always, you always persevere. Everybody, listen to that because perseverance really, like, if if I were gonna use one word to describe you, that would be one of them. That would be a, that would be a mm. word that I would say because you, no matter what, like if something's going wrong, you just you're a cool as a cucumber mm-hmm. and just okay. This is what we're going to do then. 
<laughs> you know, and just adjust. <laughs> so but you always keep the end game in in mind, which I I really like about you. Yeah, it's it's a it's nothing is a a, a smooth path. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's uh it's it's interesting. Like I'm gonna uh, we have our award ceremony tomorrow night for work is a new hustle. Mm -hmm. and the, uh, Comerica Bank is giving the kids Kindle readers and and gift cards, and H E B is giving them uh, fifty dollar gift cards to to wow. shop. Uh, we have a shopping day on the twenty eighth, which is Saturday. But um, I'm gonna my I'm gonna give the like commencement speech, and I'm gonna talk about dream anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, even when it don't look like it's gonna be. Uh, you know, what you think is going to be dream anyway. When when people tell you, you know, that you can't do a dream anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to emphasize that to the, to the kids because a lot of times that's where it starts. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times family says, oh, you can't do that. You should do this. Mm -hmm. Or nobody's in the family's done that. Like in my family, you know, nobody in the family, uh, you know, thought about doing the things that I do and they thought it was, stupid or not stupid, but that I couldn't do it. Um, and so I always had to fight in my, even in my family to say, I can do it and I'm gonna do it. Uh -huh. uh, and my mom would say, oh, she said she's gonna do all these things. And I said, yeah, I am. I didn't say I was gonna do them all at one time, but I am. So I, uh -huh. the, the things that I'm doing now, I've thought about those things uh, since I was a little kid. So, uh, you know, bring your A game because it's, you know, those those ideas of, you know, have started at, you know, age five and six years old. Uh, and so I'm just starting to really implement those things. I, I wrote a book called On My Way to the Top. And uh, in the introduction, I said, I dreamed of the things that I wanted to do, but I didn't dream of the work <laughs> that it would take to get there. <laughs> So it takes work. It takes work for what, whatever you do. It takes dedication, commitment, work, you know, long hours. Um, and I was just thinking, you know, I've dedicated, you know, my whole life. I've invested my whole life in doing the same types of things. Uh -huh. um, and sometimes I, I, I get upset or disappointed because I think I've missed out, you know, on a lot of living. Uh, but I've been committed to a particular purpose that I don't know if I necessarily chose it or not, but it chose you. Know, you. Yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, there's something to be said for everything that you, you just stated about work because, you know, these days, uh, we can have a, a mentality that of entitlement, like you see entitlement in different areas. Yeah. And there's no such thing as that. Like you, you have to get out there and hustle and do what needs to be done because uh, it's just the way that it is. Mm -hmm. That is a, that's a part of, of achieving. But what, what disappoints me with, with people once we feel like we've arrived um, is we look at our kids uh, and say they don't want to work, and they do. We talk about the millennials. Yeah. They just work different and they see That's things right, they different, do. just like we work different and we see things different than than our parents and our grandparents. Um, you know, we they want to work like some of the kids in the program. They said, Mama, come on, get up. You uh -huh. know, we got to go to work. You know, one Can little they? boy came in with his hair not cut. And then he the when he had to go to work, he, he told his mom, I need to go to the barbershop so I can look right for work. And so they do want to work, uh, and they will work. Uh, but we got to look differently. At, we got to look at them different. Mm -hmm. You know, they they um, we can't look at them through our lens of of what work means to us or what they should be. Mm -hmm. You know, we got you got to let them be and guide them. I feel like it's an unprecedented time for women in business because we see a lot more of us mm -hmm. showing up in business. Uh, and you're definitely one of the the uh, female leads here in San Antonio in terms of business. 
and innovation. Everybody knows you for your innovative ideas. So, and your vision. So thank you for being there and changing what we think about how black people look, changing the image of, of our community and representing some of the best, uh, the best in us. So I, I, I not only want to change the, the image and perception, but you know, our mindset, the way we, the way we see ourselves and the way other people see us. It's, it's a, a mindset shift that has to take place. And you're and you are are setting the path for that with Tan TV. So once again, you're listening to On the Record with Tiffany. I hope you enjoyed this episode of On the Record with Tiffany on 9:30 a.m. The Answer. And I will see you again next week. Bye.